Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to start talking about some classical compass and straight edge constructions in Euclidean geometry. Now, I'm going to be using GeoGebra here to do this, but I've pared down the tools so that we can only use the tools that are available for compass and straight edge uh, constructions. Okay, so uh, you might get out an actual physical compass and straight edge and do some of these constructions with me as I do them here. Uh, you might want to pause the video and get those tools and come back. Press pause now. All right, you're back. I hope you actually have now a physical compass and a straight edge. Now, classical Greek constructions are only allowed the use of a compass and a straight edge. A ruler can be used as a straight edge, but only if the markings are ignored. A ruler is a little bit more than just a straight edge. A straight edge is used to con connect, uh, construct line segments with given endpoints and to extend a line segment into a longer line segment. A compass can mark arcs of circles with the radius that can be set but not actually measured with the ruler. Uh, the tools on the toolbar have been trimmed down to include only tools equivalent to using a compass and a straight edge. And we left the angle and length measuring tools, but these are not actually available using a compass and a straight edge. The corresponding, um, uh, they correspond to using a protractor and a ruler. You can experiment with your own constructions using only the. Now, basically, we have what can you really do? You can you can make points, right? You can also construct circles uh, of the same radius. So if we have some, oh, you can make two points. Well, let's go ahead and back, back up. If you have two points, then you can use a straight edge to connect those. We can use a straight edge to connect, to extreme, extend this to a longer line segment or theoretically array or even a whole line although in physical practice it will have some finite length in theory that line or that ray goes on forever okay now let's take a look at what else we can do that's just that was just with a straight edge what about with a compass well basically the thing you could do with a compass is once you have a line segment or two points with a distance then we can create a circle of that radius we can mark out equal distances a circle remember is a set of points in a plane which are equally distant from a given point called the center here the center is a d so if you got your physical compass take uh make two points use your straight edge to connect the two points with your pencil and then take your compass put the pointy end at d and the end that marks at e and so there'll be hopefully some kind of little wheel or something that you move to get that adjusted correctly. And so we adjust that and we get that point there. Here's an image of a compass. You see it has some uh, pointed end there that you put at D. A wheel that you can adjust the length. A drawing end that has some kind of like pencil lead in it. And then you can hold up here at the top and spin it. So you spin it around D and you can mark out this length here. So hopefully you can do that pretty easily. Now, what we can do then is make a congruent line segment by picking some other point, F, which we can put anywhere we want. Mark out a circle of the same radius. How do you do that? Well, just make sure you don't move your compass when you go from this drawing to this drawing. Put the pointy in at F mark it around, pick any point that you want G on there, and then use your line segment, uh, use your um, straight edge tool to complete that. And so now we have a uh, constructed a congruent line segment. This particular one is dynamic so that we can start with any line segment here and construct a congruent one here. Okay, but of course on pencil and paper, you'll have a you know static image when you do this. Okay, now what I want to do now is I want to look at two classical constructions that are based on the side, side, side triangle congruence theorem. Um, all of the classic constructions, or at least most of the basic ones, are all based on either the side, side, side triangle congruence theorem or properties of a rhombus. We'll come back to the ones about properties of a rhombus in a later video 
when we uh, introduce a rhombus and its properties in uh, our quadrilaterals playlist a little bit later on. But for now, we've been introducing the side, side, side triangle congruence theorem in one of the recent videos. So let's look at what happens here. So how can we construct a congruent triangle? So here we're given any triangle. I've got it measured here. Uh, but anyway, it's just a triangle. We don't really care what the measurements are. We want to try to construct a congruent triangle down here. This goes through the steps right here, but I'll just say them out loud. Pick any point that you want for A prime. It can be anywhere you want it. Set your compass to the length A prime to A to B. So in other words, like put the pointy in on A, adjust your compass so the drawing in is at B. You might even make a mark there to make sure that that's correct. It doesn't have to be a full circle. And then draw a circle at A prime. You don't even have to draw a full circle. You just need some part of that circle uh, enough to where you can pick a point on there. Again, it can actually be any point on this entire circle. So just go any direction you want and make a mark. Put the point B, and of course take your straight edge. Now we have A prime, B prime congruent to AB. Next, what do we do? Take your compass and set it at A again, and now widen it out or shorten it, whichever is needed, to get to the length from to C. Okay, so go ahead and do this with me. So let's back up. Do this with me. Actually draw a triangle. It doesn't have to look like this one. It can be any triangle. Uh, it's kind of, you might want to make it a scalene triangle just at first for your first example, but it doesn't even have to be. It could be anything. Then pick another point. Draw that. Make an arc of a circle there. You're going to make a little mark here at B just to make sure you got the right length. Make a mark here. Make your B prime. Take your straight edge, connect this up, pause the video at any time if you need to catch up. And then take your compass now, put it at center today, make the other, make a little mark here at C since so you got the right length, make a circle here. Okay. Uh, you might want to make the full circle or at least a good piece of it. Okay. Then you want to do the same thing, center it at B, measures from B to C and make a circle there of that radius. Now, the, uh, the, the triangle we're looking for is going to be where these two circles meet. You have two choices. You can pick either one. So we pick that one, and then we can finish up our triangle. OK? And uh, this one is kind of oriented in the same way. Uh, where we can get from this one to this one with a, with a translation and maybe a rotation. Uh, had we picked the other point, it would have been, it would require a reflection uh, along with maybe a translation and rotation to get it to where we need it to be. So there we have, but either way we get a congruent triangle. So that makes, we, we constructed it with side, side, side. What were we able to do? We were actually able to mark out equal distances with our compass and from that we were able to make sure that we construct a triangle. Now how do we know this triangle is congruent? Well we have the side 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 triangle congruence theorem and so that means these angles are congruent as well. So that's how you can construct congruent triangles and notice that it's based on that side 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 theorem. How do we go about making a congruent angle? Let's start by making an angle. It can be an obtuse angle, an acute angle. Let's don't go with the straight or zero angle. Uh, let's go with a proper angle of some kind. And it doesn't matter any proper angle that you pick. Obtuse or, or, or acute or right, just pick one. And draw that physically on your paper. As I said before, pause the video anytime you need to get this done before we go on. Now we want to make a congruent angle. Well, we don't have a congruent angle tool. We have we don't have a protractor, okay? If we had a protractor, we could measure this angle and use the measure to help us draw another angle. But if we only have a compass and straight edge, how are we going to do it? Well, once again, remember the side, side, side property. Pick another point and just go out a certain distance, uh, another point, and just draw a ray. Again, this can go any direction that you want it to go. Let's say here, okay? Next. Uh, pick a point 
any point that you want on this ray here, any point that you want, and go out a certain distance. Go out that distance and make a circle. This doesn't really have to be the full circle. It has to be enough to you know, go for where it touches here, but also it has to go where it touches the other side of the angle. That might be longer if it's obtuse, uh, or more of a, you know, a larger arc of the circle if it's obtuse than it will be if it's uh, if it's acute, but but just draw that part of the of the thing. You can draw the full circle if you want. So now then identify this point here where it intersects the other ray. Now let's take our our uh, our our same uh, setting without moving the compass settings. That's the key. Without moving the compass setting. Instead of taking this point here at H, take the one at H prime as the center, make the circle, mark that. That will be either K prime or L prime, whichever one you want to call it. I call it K prime. Now we measure from K prime to L using our compass. Make that measurement. And without changing the compass, come down here and do a circle centered at K prime. We have two places where these two circles intersect. See these two circles, they intersect here and here. Pick one, doesn't really matter which one, let's say that one. And then complete that and there's your ray. And now you have congruent angles. This, like I said, this one is, is dynamic. So if we do an obtuse or acute angle, it will give us the correct thing. Now, why does it work? Well, it works because those are congruent isosceles triangles. And why are they congruent? Because of the side, side, side period. Because these two original circles here that were purple in this picture uh, have the same radius, all these blue line segments here, uh, here, here, and here uh, are, all are all the same length, so those are isosceles triangles. And then we also made sure that the this length here and this length distance here were the same so that made these two green sides the same length as well so those are two congruent sides so now all the corresponding sides are congruent by the side 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 property we get that these two um, triangles are congruent triangles and of course that means that their that their uh, angles that they have there will be congruent so you can see these do have the same measure if we were to get out a protractor we could measure it but uh, the point here is we can construct it without actually having to measure it. So those two triangles are congruent. Therefore, we can construct the two angles that way. You don't necessarily have to draw in the whole triangle. Once you get to this point here, then you have the, uh, the congruent angle. So those are two very classic constructions, uh, making congruent angles and making congruent triangles. And they're both based on the side, side, side triangle congruence theorem. And we were able to do that using only a classical tools of a compass and a straight edge. No ruler, no protractor, no fancy algebra tools that were not uh, based on equivalence of just those two things. Now, as I said, we'll come back to these things. Uh, parallel line through a given point, not a line, perpendicular bisector, a line segment, perpendicular line given through, uh, through a point, not a line perpendicular line uh, uh, to a given line through a point not on the line, and an angle bisector. Those are all constructions that are based on a property of a rhombus. We'll come back to a video over those in a later uh, playlist.